The Seventh Tower by Garth Nix. Book Five, Into Battle. Chapter 18. No, it isn't, Ildi, said the other chosen. Don't be stupid. Who are you, boy? You look familiar. Gronius' son. I am Tal Grail Rerum, announced Tal. I bear important news for her Imperial Highness. Never heard of you, said the man. What are you doing here with important news? Tell that to Sushi. We're busy. Got a Beastmaker series to finish. Best of a hundred. Yes, go away, pronounced the Empress. At least Tao was pretty certain she was the Empress. He'd only ever seen her in the distance before, at important events, when she wore full robes of state. But he thought Ebbet had said her name was Cathild, and the man had just called her Ildi. Um, you are her Imperial Highness? he asked hesitantly. Of course I am. That is, we are, the old woman retorted. Why does this doubt, this treachery, this carping disbelief continue? I didn't doubt, Highness, Tal assured her hastily. It's only I've never been so close to you before, and your, um, radiance is blinding. Well, that is true, the Empress conceded. You are a well-brought-up boy, but I cannot recall your parents' names among our violet personages. Perhaps they are newly risen. We are so busy that we fear we get a trifle behind from time to time. Tal glanced down at the sunstone on his finger and its glowing violet pulse. Obviously the Empress thought he was of the Violet Order, the child of a Shadow Lord and Lady. Time to change the subject. Highness, I bring grave news, he said again. There is a plot against the Chosen by the Shadows of Ymir. Some of the keystones have been unsealed and the veil is threatened. Our whole world is in danger. The Empress smiled and shook her finger at Tal. Now, now, if you want to present a light puppet drama to us, you must apply to our light vizier first. And I'll tell you straight off that your story sounds stupid. It's been done before. And anyway, we'd rather play Beastmaker than watch some incompetent stripling fumbling about with light puppets, said the man. You're the light vizier? asked Tal. He had a terrible sinking feeling in his chest. They were both so old and they didn't appear to be listening to him at all. Uthern Lawless Offen, Light Vizier to... to her, replied the man. He waved his hand vaguely, and a faint violet glow came off his sunstone. He leaned forward and almost fell out of his chair, both furry serpents arriving only just in time to catch him. Confidentially, my boy, he whispered, I'm the eldest brother. I should have been emperor after we kicked Merker out, but she was in more with the violin and the indigo. Tal's nose wrinkled as Uthern leaned back. The light vizier wasn't just old. He was drunk, and so, by the look of her, was the empress. I'm not pretending, he said urgently. I'm telling the truth. Sushin is in league with the Inerians, and they are unsealing the keystones. At Sushin's name, Empress and Light Vizier looked at each other like children caught in a lector's glare. Not our business, announced the Empress. Ceremonial duties only, made quite clear, long ago. You may leave us. But you have to listen, urged Tal. He jumped to his feet and stood over the Empress. You have to do something. My father is trapped inside the orange keystone. Lokar is trapped inside the red. Look! He undid the knot in his shirt and pulled out the red keystone. It flared brightly as he raised it, and both the Empress and Uthern whimpered and tried to shield their eyes. We don't want it! shrieked the Empress. Tal stared down at the two of them, cowering in their chairs. He couldn't believe these were the highest and mightiest of the Chosen, the pinnacle of castle society. What was wrong with them? Look into the stone, he pleaded. Your Highness, you have to use the Violet Keystone to release Lokar. You have to. Haven't got it, whimpered the Empress. Foundation of doubt. Tal lowered the Red Keystone and stepped back. What do you mean you haven't got it? He whispered. I've come so far. 
gone through so much. She never had it, said Uthern with a vindictive look at his sister. Merker had a back way out, all the way down to the underfolk levels. He took it. The violet keystone, the claw of Romelin, the secret knowledge. But I struck him as he ran. The old man raised a skinny arm and mimed, throwing a bolt of light. I never had it, repeated the Empress. No one could know. We agreed, Uthern, but you told the Shadow. I did it, hissed Uthern. It was you, you! What Shadow? asked Tal slowly. What did you tell the Shadow? Sharakor, 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 crooned the Empress. How we wish he had never slithered across our path. Sharakor? asked Tal. Your spirit shadow? The Empress and Uthern laughed, a mad giggle that raised the hair on the back of Tal's head. Not mine! <laughs> no, no! cackled the Empress. She gestured at the furred servants behind her. There are our spirit shadows. No one to guard us in the castle. No loyal spirit shadows to make sure we survive. <laughs> Sharakor is his own master. Tal stared aghast at the little black humanoids. Apart from the fact that as bound servants they should be guarding the two Chosen's bodies back in the castle, they were obviously completely harmless and were totally unsuitable to be spirit shadows to any Violet Chosen, let alone the Empress and the Light Vizier. Yet everyone thought Sherikor was the bound and true servant of the Empress. Sherikor, who was regarded as the most powerful spirit shadow of them all. And Sushin? he asked. What is Sushin? Shadow Pawn. He had stopped laughing and was weeping now, the tears sliding down his aged and wrinkled cheeks. Shadow Pawn of Sherikor. You have betrayed us, said Tal. He couldn't believe it. They'd undermined everything. It was their fault that his father was trapped in the Orange Keystone. They were ultimately responsible for the disappearances and the deaths, the pit, and the perversion of the Hall of Nightmares. You have betrayed us all to the shadows. No, said Cathild. I am the Empress of the Chosen. I am Most High. No, said Uther, but his voice quavered and the tears still fell. I am Light Vizier. Nothing will change. The Chosen will go on. The castle will stand. The veil will halt. No, they won't, screamed Tal. He was almost sobbing himself, but with rage, not sorrow. I should kill you both. It's what the ice carls would do to traitors. He stepped back still farther and raised his own sunstone. It swirled with violet light. Tal fed his anger into it, and the violet light grew and strengthened. Tal didn't know what he was going to do or what spell he could cast. He just let all his rage, frustration, and fear fly into the stone. Violet lightning began to spit out of the sunstone, crackling and flashing. It shot out in a round Tal, spinning a barrier of violet streaks. Tal tried to make it stop circling and strike the two chosen, but it wouldn't be directed. It rose higher and higher until there was a spinning storm of violet lightning bolts flashing over Tal's head. The Empress and the Light Vizier stared up at it, white-faced. Then they fell out of their chairs and prostrated themselves at Tal's feet, sobbing and clutching at his ankles. Spare us, spare us, Merker, Ramellin, whoever you are, 